Hello everyone, welcome to your YouTube channel, Jai Shri Jarvaji. Today we shall continue to start reading the chapters of the book, You Are a Badass by Jen Zero. Chapter 21. Millions of Mirrors No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. By Eleanor Roosevelt, activist, feminist, superhero, longest serving first lady of the United States Eva. One of the most staggering things about other people is that they, provi they provide us with valuable and often alarm alarmingly intimate information about who they are as soon as we meet them. If we pay attention, we can pick up on the major clues they are sending out through their body language, their appearance, their lifestyle, their actions, their interests, their words, how they treat their dogs, the waitress, themselves, etc. Some people let it all hang out for everyone to see right away. Others let it seep out in little spurts. I love what is trying. I admire how confident you are about your weight problem. I just out of prison etc. With the exception of sociopath or the skilled pathological liar, the majority of humanity gives us plenty to chew on right out of the gate. All of this information then goes through the filter of who we are and depending on our perceptions and judgments and hangups and number of years spent in therapy, we decide if the person is someone we want to get to know better or not. We are all attracted to as well as turned off by various things about other people. And the things that stand out the most to us are the things that remind us the most of ourselves. This is because other people are like mirror for us. If somebody bugs you, you are projecting onto them something that you don't like about yourself. And if you think they are awesome, they are reflecting back something that, that you see in yourself that you like. I know this sounds like I am making a massive generalization but just stay with me here. The people you surround yourself with are excellent mirrors for who you are and how much or how little you love yourself. We attract people into our lives for a reason just as they attract us into theirs. We all help each other grow and figure out our issues. If you seize the opportunity to learn from instead of just react to the highly irritating things other people do. It's our annoying friends or family members or clients or neighbors or lady on the train with the voice like a bullhorn who helps us grow and see how who was who we truly are even more than our beloved BFF. BFFs do. Don't miss the glorious opportunity to learn that being handed to you by the person whose mouth you would really love to stick your fist in. The things that bother us about other people bother us because they remind us of something that we don't like about ourselves or their behavior triggers a fear of insecurity that we have but may not realize we have. For the longest time one of my big stories was that being feminine was weak and annoying. Somewhere along the way I decided that it was not cool or powerful to act like egg girl and my femininity became a part of me that I was ashamed of. Hence I was much less threatened by women who came at me with a power drill than women who came at me with an eyebrow pencil. Which is why it's pretty hilarious to me still that one of my best friends is, is as girly as they get. I met her when we were working together in New York City and was instantly drawn to her because she's hilariously brilliant and sweet and did a flawless impression of one of her co-workers walking down the hall with his hair sticking out that always left me doubled over clinging to furniture. Unlike me, however, she is a lover of girls' nights out and money pity dates and eager old, eager ogler of engagement rings when summoned by fluttering hand of a son, soon to be bride and a pro at the girly gang girly gir, girly girl gang greeting. Arms raised high in the air, head back, eyes squeezed shut, high pitched or oh my god for all to hear. For this we call her pink. A decade later, I am living in Los Angeles and Pink is living outside New York City, married with a bunch of kids snatch when she decides to take her first solo vacation since becoming a mom and heads to San Diego to see her best friend from college. She calls and begs me to drive down to see her. I agree, somewhat begrudgingly. It was not the two-hour drive that bothered me but the best friend from college who I'd never met but was sure was pinker than Pink. I imagined a full-on sorority scene, complete with painting her two nails while having a Meg Grand movie fest and talking about how fat we had gotten. But I love Pink, so off I went. Meanwhile, down in San Diego, Pink's best friend from college is less than thrilled at the prospect of Pink's best girl pal from a New York City. Days driving down from LA. Her eyes were also rolling at the potential estrogen bomb. So imagine a delight when we discovered that we were both equally as macho. Once we realized that the playing field was not as overwhelmingly pink as we feared it would be. However, we got the biggest surprise of all, our inner neglected girls, 
felt safe to come out hiding. All three of us lost our voices that weekend, cackling and screaming. Oh my god, for all to hear. I wouldn't be surprised if a toenail or two even got painted. She don't remember was too drunk on wine's criticism. I am still not the most enthused member of a bridal shower and I am not saying that you have to come around and like everything in this world that bothers you. But I am saying that if you actively don't like something, it's because it resonates with you on some level. It has meaning to you. When you find yourself dealing with someone who irritates you, rising up and confronting the situation can do a hell of a lot more than just making your life more pleasant in the long run. It can help you heal and grow and get out of victim mode because it forces you to deal with the gnarlier aspects of yourself, the parts that make you not so proud. None of us care to admit that we are dishonest, conceited, insecure, unethical, mean, bossy, stupid, lazy, etc. But that's what attracted you to the people you noticed it in and them to you in the first place and admitting it is the first step in letting it go away. If people are annoying in a way that has nothing to do with us, we either don't notice it or we don't get that hung upon it. For example, say there's someone in your life who who you find to be an insufferable know-it-all. Every time you open your mouth to talk about something you did, she says she's already done it. Anything you know, she already knows and knows much more about. And she has to make sure you and everyone within a 10 mile radius knows how much more she knows about it. While you find yourself entertaining fantasies about putting her head through the wall every time you are around her. Someone else might be hanging on her every word, unable to get enough of a fascinating and brilliant conversation. The reason she makes you crazy is because you most likely are are a know-it-all yourself or you worry that you are one. Or you have insecurities about people thinking that you know nothing. Our reality is a mirror of our thoughts, the people in our reality included. Same thing goes with what uh, what people throw at us. Would, would you be offended if someone kept making fun of how short you were if you were 6 feet tall? It most likely wouldn't re- even register or if it did. You would just think they were kind of strange but if they teased you about being bossy and deep down you feared you were, it would be definitely your attention. What you focus on you create more of in your life. If you are consciously or subconsciously focused on certain beliefs about who you are or who you want to be or who, do, who you do not want to be will attract people the mirror, who mirror those traits back at you. At the end of the day, it's not about them. It's about you believing you are worthy of being loved and seen for who you really are. When we agree to let ourselves down in favor of supporting the bad behavior of others, it often stems from the same impulse. We are unwilling to make other people more uncomfortable than they just made us. Not terribly study in the old self-love department, is it? By making them uncomfortable, I mean declining to participate in their drama, by the way not by being equally abusive back. This is not about getting an eye for an eye and sinking to a lower level. It's about standing up for your higher self no matter if the person you are dealing with should choose to have the experience of feeling disappointed, feeling hurt, feeling inconvenienced, seeing you as a crazy person. It's about respecting yourself instead of catering to you insecure need to be liked. This is incredibly powerful because when you love yourself enough to stand in your truth no matter what the cost everyone benefits, you start attracting the kinds of things, people and opportunities that are in alignment with mo- with who you truly are, which is way more fun than hanging out with a bunch of irritating energy suckers and by declining to participate in other people's drama. You not only raise your own frequency, but you offer the drama queens the chance to rise up too, instead of everyone continuing to play a low lame game. Never apologize for who you are, it lets the whole world down. We all know someone who, who does not take shit from anyone, ever. We look upon these types of people with wide-eyed reverence and would never dream of being stupid enough to present them with any of our BS or try to make them wrong. Why? Because we respect them and mm, are usually kind of terrified of them. And why do we respect them? So how can you get rid of your lean or projections and judgments and grace the world with your highest, most unapologetic self? First one, own your ugly. Start noticing the things that drive you drive nuts about people and instead of complaining or judging or getting defensive about them use them as a mirror especially if you find yourself getting really worked up get minded real with yourself is this quality something you have yourself or is there a certain aspect to it that you loathe to admit it just like you or does it remind you of something you are actively trying to suppress or avoid or that you are actively doing just the opposite of or that you are threatened by 
second one question you ugly once you discover what part of yourself you are projecting on the person who is presently bugging the living crap out of you you can start letting it go begin by asking yourself some very simple questions and diffusing the limiting and false stories you have been lugging around for ages why do i need to be for this situation not to bother me using the above scenario let's say you discover that you are a lot more rigid than you care to admit this is very valuable information because you now know that in old order to be happier you need to loosen your bone well mom stop insisting that people do things exactly the way you do them notice we are being ridiculously demanding simply because it's bec- it's become your habit and not because it's really necessary and constantly ask yourself can i let can i let this one go by becoming aware of what we do we can investigate why we do it and then choose to keep it or drop it instead of blindly reacting through habit what am i getting out of being this way as discussed in chapter 17 it's so easy once you figure out it has it isn't hard we don't do anything unless we are getting something out of it even if what we were getting are false benefits using this scenario some of the positive benefits of being rigid are that you are always on time you get shit done etc but there are also some negative advantages to being rigid too you intimidate people into getting your way you get to be right whenever someone messes up how would i feel if i wasn't this way one of the best ways to release a poor mentioned lazy behavior is by asking yourself how you would feel if this was not true for you anymore how would you i feel if i took the poll out of my ass about everyone doing everything exactly how we say to do all the time in every circumstance ask the question and then imagine yourself as this person who has let it go how does your body feel what do you how do you use the brain space for what for that used to be taken up with poisonous thoughts about the inconsiderate peanuts you are surrounded by who are not following your instructions feel into the reality of what it would be to let let this go breath into it visualize it fall in love with not having it anymore and then kick it to the curb don't be an enabler in the first year cases where you are not sure what to do but you really want to do help when someone recognize the differences between helping and enabling when you reach out a helping hand do you feel like they are pulling you down or that you are lifting them up toward their potential are they grateful or entitled do they use your help actively more themselves in a positive direction or do they constantly need more 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 just this one last fun for the 50th time pay attention and trust how you feel if you are truly helping them and they are rising to the occasion it will raise everyone's frequency and you will feel good if you are enabling them you will feel heavy depressed and eventually resentful while it's no fun to kick someone to the curb when they are at their lowest low if you constantly bail them out they will never wake up and save themselves why should they they have got you to fund their pity party tough love is still love okay all let's end up for today we shall continue to start reading the chapters of the book you are a badass bitch and sincero thank you for continuously listening to our recordings have a great day